Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ahmad Azim bin Azahir and now I will give you a brief explanation of the interaction about noise pollution. First thing first, I would like to explain about the sound. Sound is a vibration that travel through the air or another medium and can be heard when they reach a person's or animal's ear and sound pressure level can be expressed in decibels. When an object vibrates, it causes slight changes in air pressure. This air pressure changes travel as wave through the air and produce sounds. Referring to the figure in the slide, Basically, this is the image where the drums is being hit by a stick. So basically, the drum surface vibrates back and forth, and as it moves forward, it pushes the air in contact with the surface. This creates a positive pressure by compressing the air. When the surface moves opposite, it creates a negative pressure by decompressing the air. So the drum surface vibrates. It, during, as, the, as the drum surface by fabrics, it creates alternating regions of higher and lower air pressure. This pressure variation travels through the air as sound waves. Next, so this is the noise. The noise is unwanted sound judged to be unpleasant, loud or disruptive to hearing. Noise pollution is generally defined as regular exposure to elevated sound level that may lead to adverse effects in humans or other living organisms. Mm. Exposure for more than 8 hours to constant noise beyond 85 decibels may be hazardous. So basically, if the person works 8 hours daily in close proximity to a busy road or highway, they are very likely exposed to a traffic noise pollution around 85 decibels. So as a consequence, it is recommended noise level be kept below 65 decibels during the day and indicates that restful sleep is impossible with nighttime ambient noise levels in excess of 30 decibels. Okay, so basically there are three types of noise which are continuous, intermittent and impulsive noise. So the continuous noise is the noise that is produced continuously such as the by machinery that keeps running without interruption. So, this could come from factory equipment, engine noise, or heating and ventilation system. This type of noise can be measured for just a few minutes with a sound level meter to get a sufficient representation of the noise levels. Next type of noise is intermittent noise, which is the noise level that increases and decreases rapidly. This type of noise may be caused by a train passing by, factory equipment that operates in cycle, or also aircraft flying above house. This type of noise can be measured in a similar way as a continuous noise. However, the duration of each occurrence and the time between each one need to be identified. And finally, this is the impulsive noise. This type of noise is most associated with the construction and demolition industry where it is sudden bursts that are fast and surprising. This type of noise commonly created by explosions or construction equipment and also, this type of noise can be measured by using sound level meter that can calculate the peak values of the sound level. So, what is the sound level? What is the sound level meter? Sound level meter, or also known as so called as SLM, is an instrument which is designed to measure sound level in a standardized way. It responds to sound approximately the same way as the human ear and gives objective reproducible measurement of sound pressure levels. So, basically, in this experiment, that the group con that we are conducting, decibel, decibel SM was used to measure the noise for 1 minute at distance from 1 meter, 2 meter, and 3 meter respectively at 4 different sources. So, what is a safe decibel for people? WHO estimates that million young people worldwide could be at risk of hearing loss due to unsafe listening practices. Over 43 million people between the age of 12 to 35 years live with disabling hearing loss due to the different causes. And according to WHO, sound level less than 70 decibels are not damaging to living organisms regardless of how long or consistent the exposure is. So referring to the figure, it will give you the instruction about the duration and the limit of the decibel that people can endure in their daily life. So, this is the way to reduce the exposure. First thing, 
We need to use a plug which believe can reduce the noise up to 5 to 45 decibels depending on the type of a plug. Second, we also can limit time that we spend and engage in noisy activities as the duration of exposure is one of the key factors that contribute to hearing problems. And finally, we also can get a regular checkups to identify the onset of hearing loss at an early stage. Road traffic. The test taken in the different distance from the source. The road traffic has been taken at night to investigate the replication of noise to the housing area nearby the site. The measurement is taken for one minute. The noise produced from the road traffic is depending to the amount and the type of vehicle present. At one meter, the average decibel is at 3.7 while max at 97.3 and the peak decibel is 102. At 2 meters, the average is 87.8, the max is 103, while peak decibel is 108.5. At 3 meters, the average decibel is 83.5, the max is 93.4 and the peak is 94.9. The limit set by DOE for road traffic noise is at 45 decibel at night. The test done by the roadside of Liberal Raya and Jim Laka shown that the noise produced by the roadside has exceeded the limit. There are some houses near the roadside, however, the distance from the source may it be included. Most of the noise produced by heavy vehicles and speeding cars. The noise also intensifies when the amount of vehicles increases. In order to reduce the noise pollution generated by the road traffic, preventive measure is advised. The methods such as quieter car and tire need to, to be improvised. The quieter road surface and speed limit need to be enforced. Insulation of noise barrier and house insulation can be considered.